In this tutorial, I will explain how to set up a truth tree in propositional logic. I'll avoid talking about the purpose of truth trees as well as um, the steps involved with decomposition. Those will be covered by a different video. This video is intended just to teach you how to, given a certain problem involved with truth trees, to set the truth tree up and begin the process. So there are four basic tests for the truth trees, or that's the, at least how we're going to approach it. There's a test for to see if a set of propositions is consistent or inconsistent, whether or not a proposition is contingent, tautological, or a contradiction. There's a test to see whether or not a pair of propositions are equivalent. And finally, there's a test to see if an argument is valid or invalid. So we'll look at the, I think, the simplest test, this test to determine whether or not a set of propositions is consistent or inconsistent. So if asked, uh, is this set of propositions consistent or inconsistent, the way you will go about setting up the truth tree procedure is to begin by stacking the propositions, creating three columns, and in the middle column, simply writing each proposition on an individual line. You'll want to number these propositions so you have a way of indexing or referring to them, and you'll label each one of these propositions a P just to indicate that it's part of the set that you're testing. So let's take a quick look at an example. Suppose you were asked to see if a particular set consisting of two propositions is consistent or inconsistent. You'll notice here that we have a P and R, and then we also have M and not P, two propositions. We write those on individual lines and we stack them. We sort of vertically write them on top of each other. Now the order in which we write them, uh, if we put M and not P at line one, and P and R at line two, wouldn't matter as long as all of the propositions are put on individual lines and they're all stacked on top of each other. Next, uh, there is a, another test you might use to determine whether a single proposition is a contingency, tautology, or a contradiction. Now, e, there, there's really kind of two tests. There's a test to see if a proposition is a contradiction, and then there's a test to see if the proposition is a tautology. Now, if the proposition fails both of these tests, then through the process of an elimination, you will determine that it's a contingency. So the simplest test, I think, is to test to see if the proposition is a contradiction. And you simply set up the tree simply by writing that proposition on a line, numbering that proposition, and then, of course, labeling that proposition with a P in the right-hand column to indicate this is the proposition you're going to test. Now, to test to see if a proposition is a tautology, you need to do something special. And what that special thing is, is you need to negate the entire proposition. That is, on the first line, which you're going to simply write that proposition down, you'll need to give the literal negation of that proposition. And so you see, if we're going to um, test to see if P, or some complex proposition we might want to test, this, test for, to see if T is a tautology, we can simply write parentheses around it and then put the sign for negation to ensure that we're negating the entire proposition. Then we'll also number uh, that proposition and label it with a P to indicate that it's a proposition. Let's look at two examples. First, if we're going to test to see if a particular proposition is a contradiction, we simply set up the tree by writing that proposition down at line one. So to test to see if P and R is a contingency, tautology, or contradiction, we might say, okay, I have two tests, one test to see if it's a contradiction, one test to see if it's a tautology. If it fails both of those tests, then I can determine if it's a contingency. Let me start with the simplest test, which is the test for contradiction. And so we simply write P and R down at line one. Now, um, suppose we wanna now test to see if it's a tautology, what we'll do, again, is that when we test this, we have to put parentheses around the proposition and then negate it. That is, we want to write the literal negation of the proposition we want to test at line one. And so this is an important thing to keep in mind. And again, uh, if you're going to test to see if the proposition is a contingency, you need to kind of make use of both of those tests and if it fails both of those tests, then you can infer or conclude that the proposition is a contingency. 
The third test or the sort of third sort of setup is if you're going to determine whether or not two propositions are logically equivalent. Now, this one I think is the most difficult to set up at least. It requires a little bit of um, skill. And what you have to do here is if you're going to test to see if P is equivalent to Q, you're sort of comparing two propositions to see if they're true under the same conditions, true or false under the same conditions. You, What you're going to write at line one is the literal negation of P by conditional Q. That is, you're going to take the two propositions, put the double arrow between them, and then put a negation uh, on the outside. That is, you're going to give write the literal negation of that entire biconditional that you formed at line one. So to test if P is equivalent to, to Q, one thing you could do is say, okay, I'm going to put a biconditional between these two, or put the double arrow between these two propositions, then negate the whole thing. In addition, you'll want to number this proposition and also write a P on the right hand side to indicate that this is the proposition you are testing. A quick example, suppose you are um, asked to determine whether or not P and R is equivalent to M and not P. Again, you could you are going to write the negation of the biconditional or the sort of biconditional formation of these two propositions. And you can see at line one of this example right here, we have this complicated, not open brace, open parentheses, P and R, by biconditional sign or double arrow, open parentheses, M and not P, close parentheses, close brace. The final test is for deductive validity and invalidity. Uh, problems like these you'll be given an argument. Sometimes it will contain premises, sometimes it will not. And you're asked to determine if that argument is deductively valid. Now the test for this is not too complicated, but one thing that people kind of, there's one piece of this that people sometimes forget. So if we're going to test to see if P, Q, and then whatever number of premises we want all the way, let's say to Y, therefore Z is deductively valid or invalid, what we're going to do is stack the premises on individual lines and then the negation of the conclusion. That is, we're going to write P and then below that Q and then below that R and then all the other um, propositions all the way up to our last premise and then the literal negation of the conclusion. Well, so you kind of see this uh, turnstile or this tack looking thing, this thing between the Y and the Z. Uh, you're going to not want to put that in the truth tree at all. Instead, what you're going to do is take the conclusion and negate it. Again, you'll go through the process of numbering each one of these lines so you can refer back to it when you go through the process of decomposition. And then you want to label each of the propositions with a P to indicate this is the sort of set you are going to decompose. So let's finish with an example for the fourth and final test here. So what we have is if we're asked to test to see if P, uh, P and R and also the second premise M and not P, therefore S, if S then M is deductively valid or invalid. Remember we write the prop, we write each of the premises down on individual lines and then we need to take the proposition to the right of that turnstile or tack or that sign to indicate the conclusion and we need to negate the conclusion. Now we don't want to negate just the S, we want to write the literal negation of that whole proposition on the final line. And so this is a kind of thing that people forget to do. You'll want to make sure you negate the conclusion. So those are the four tests or four ways to set up to test the four kind of things that we are interested in. And 